Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Our guest today is Mike Aquilina. He's our most returning guest. Uh, and he has a new book out. We're going to be talking with him about that too. Rabbles, Riots, and Ruins. It kind of sounds a little bit like it's familiar territory based on what's been happening in the news lately. So we'll be right back with Mike Aquilina and more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Cindy and I are back from uh, sailing in the Virgin Islands on our boat, Spirit of Adventure. Uh, Cindy named her, named her that. Uh, we got to hold two different sailing retreats while we were out there. We were out there for about five or six weeks. But she named her the Spirit of Adventure uh, because uh, that's what uh, that's what we as Christians are made for. Uh, we're made for adventure. My show is called The Bear Wozniak Adventure, and that's because each of us has an adventure. Each of us has a purpose. God has a plan for each of us. And believe me, uh, some of the plans God has for us are wild. God, uh, God uh, will... will allow us to be in situations or put us in situations where we can't uh we can't do it without his help you know we like it like that there's those moments when you go uh like like the disciples that were very experienced fishermen some of them and they were when they were in the boat and uh and the winds came up and they said lord help us we perish and sometimes we get to that place in our lives like when we feel like that Whenever I <clears throat> sailed my boat, when I used to sail my boat alone, I had another sailboat years ago. I always trailed a line out out the back of my boat because most mostly people didn't want to sail with me. I was sailing by myself, and I had about a two hundred foot line uh, trailing behind my boat with a knot every ten feet. And the last knot on a rope on a boat is called the bitter end. And uh, the idea would be if I fell out of the boat, I needed to grab onto that rope. And believe me, if I missed that last knot on that rope, uh, if I missed the bitter end, it truly was the bitter end. And so sometimes I think in life we feel like that, that we've, we're like those disciples in the boat that, Lord, w what are you doing wrong? <laughs> you know, what's going on here? Help us, we perish. And he said to them, oh, you of little faith. So uh, the challenge for us today is when we find ourselves in those situations, um, and we feel like we're at the bitter end. Uh, my mom, my mom used to say Jesus likes to ride in like the Calvary, like in those old westerns. They come in at the last minute to save the day. Or she would say he was a, saw, a swashbuckler. You know, he'd swing in, uh, you know, using the uh, uh, the chandelier with his with his blade open and ready to save the day. So, whatever situation you find yourself in. Uh, turn ad adversity into adventure and just turn and, and trust the Lord. So, uh, But we're happy to have our guest with us today. Mike Aquilina is back with us. Aloha, Mike. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing fine, Bear. Thanks for having me back. Well, you have a new setting. Usually I see you uh, surrounded by books. And now <laughs> you, did you move to a new setting today or what? Or you, you got rid of all your books just for today because uh, it's beastly hot up in my office there's no air conditioning and oh, I, uh, what? you know i can stand it for 10 to 15 minutes but uh but i'm uh i i'm loath to go longer than that so, uh, so you I just use the word loath oh my goodness <laughs> yeah because we don't want to see you well, Mike Aguilina, for you guys, in case you don't know, he doesn't sweat or perspire. He he glistens a little bit, but that's about it. He doesn't want to work up a sweat. And it's good to have you back on. Before we talk about your new book, Rabbles, Riots, and Ruins, can you just give us the 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 uh, Reader's Digest uh, compressed version? Remember those old books when Reader's Digest used to have the compressed, condensed books? We, we we want to know who Mike Mike Aquilina is. What what makes him a Mike Aquilina? Just give us the highlights of how you got from here to having written how many books now? I don't know. It's in the seventies. It's in the seventies. He doesn't even know. I don't. Know. Okay. Well, you're well, <laughs> well, you're rivaling. I have my Louis L'Amour westerns here. I see. And and uh, he wrote one hundred and five. I think they keep publishing um, some of his short stories. So you you'll be up there. You'll be there soon. Yeah. So give us the highlight version of of Mike Aquilina. I grew up in coal country in northeastern Pennsylvania. My my father worked for a coal company. My grandfather did. 
and before that, my ancestors were in Sicily. <laughs> so, uh, wow. so, 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 uh, you know, I grew up as a reader. My, you know, my father grew up very poor, and um, and he couldn't afford books. So he and his friends used to chip in a penny a month so that they could buy a dime novel and share it among ten of them. And oh, have, no kidding. <laughs> they'd have only like half a week to 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 read it. And so they'd uh they they do that every month, month after month, and they'd um they'd buy the novels of the of Alexandre Dumas and that sort of thing. Read the three musketeers. Uh, yeah, the swashbucklers. Stuff. Yeah. So I grew up with a great reverence for books because my for, my for my dad, they were rare, they were precious, they were almost sacred objects. I remember his refrain when I in my childhood was um was uh our books are our friends. So I would yes. never write a book. I would never write in a book, you know, and a book just seemed this impossible thing. So that's um, yeah. that's so beautiful. Yeah, your books are your friends. I know when I when I uh when I returned to the Catholic Church, and I became so enamored with the early church fathers, and I'd go down to the beach and I would read uh, on my iPad, have a cigar at night, and read and read and read and read and read, and so I might get a text from a friend, and they'd say, "So what are you? What are you doing?" I go, "I'm hanging out with some friends. Who? <laughs> Augustine, Aquinas, you know, um, and they are like friends, aren't they? Your yeah. books, yes. And some of them, do you ever find yourself rereading books? Oh yeah. Oh sure, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, you know, I have my favorites, and I go back to them again and again. And I have certain books that have served me as a writer, as mm. models. You know, these books mm -hmm. are 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 the uh, kind of the beacon for me. So I keep going back to those just so I can imitate the style of them. Stay, stay so then, familiar with the style. And so then, tell us more. Then, so you you had this this reverence for books, mm -hmm. and there's a reason for it. Jesus is the Word. You know, words are. Unbelievable that we, you and I, can share thoughts because we know how to use these word symbols. It's, a, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was, I was a reader, and uh, I was especially interested in um, antiquity and ancient times. Yeah. My my parents bought me a whole bunch of books on archaeology, and I remember reading a book on archaeology that was in my grade school library. It was, mm -hmm. uh, it was told how Heinrich, Heinrich Schliemann went to Troy and, and, you know, dynamited the hillsides and everything yes. and dug until he found the gold of Troy. And yeah. it was just, it was a great adventure story. So yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to be a, a, an archaeologist. Yes, but archaeologists, on. Mike, archaeologists sweat. <laughs> and as we said earlier, Mike only glistens. No, my mother used to subscribe to uh, uh, biblical archaeology. And yeah. we get it, I think, once a month or once a quarter, and I was fascinated. So I understand that. Maybe that's why I have that those same, you like, you know, when people say, what do you like to read? Oh, I read really books about old, I like to read old, really old books. And so you became fascinated with history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I, I kind of dallied away from the church when I was young, in high school and college. And when I, when I had a reawakening as a young adult, uh, it was naturally for me to go back to the most ancient sources, right? And to the fathers oh, of the church, the writers yeah. of the early church, the history of the early church. And I and I got really interested in it. I was drawn to it for all the same reasons uh, that I was drawn to, you know, ancient Greece, ancient Rome when I yes. was a child. Uh, but now I had, had even better reasons too, and uh, higher reasons. And so I got very much interested in it. And, and my friends knew me to be, a reader of the ancients, and so uh, mm. in the mid in the mid nineties, uh, early nineties, I guess Bob Lockwood from our Sunday Visitor, great man, he was president of the company. Yeah. He asked me to write a book on the fathers of the church, and I told him no. I think I said you should get an academic scholar to do that. Uh -huh. And Bob Bob said no. I think you're the man. I wanted mm. to reach ordinary people, and, uh, and exactly. He said, and besides, we've asked a few scholars and they've all turned us down. So I, I wrote that book and it changed my life. The research yes. changed me interiorly, yes. but also the success of the book. Uh, yes. Because it, it became a best-selling book, much to the surprise of the publisher. They, <laughs> they wanted to publish it just to fill a hole in their product line. Yeah. It ended up selling a lot for them. And now it's still in print wow. all these years later. And what's the book. title of that book? The Fathers of the Church. And the Fathers of the Church. The, fa introduction well, to the, the Fathers of the Church, and Introduction to the First Christian Teachers. Yeah, we recommend, uh, we, we love uh, reading the early church fathers. I, 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 I wish I could just spend 
hours, you know, soaking that up. You know, life is full of challenges for me time-wise, but I, I could just, I, I want to be Mike Aquilina so bad. We're talking with Mike Aquilina, our most uh, frequent guest on our show uh, by far. And uh, we're going to be talking about this, his new book. I love the titles of your book. Some of them are so creative. But this one is Rabbles, Riots, and Ruins. And no, it's not about San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I, sorry, San Francisco. I used to love San Francisco. I lived, I lived in Santa Cruz near there. But no, it's not the condition of our current cities. It's, the, it's talking about some of the great uh, cities uh, during the time of the, that, uh, of the early church fathers, their history and, 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 uh, and, the, and the, really the, uh, the, the, the genesis of the church. We'll be right back with more Mike Aquilina and the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned now. Here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We, we want to invite you to go to our website. The, the, uh, excuse me. The website is schoolofmanliness.com. We just changed the name. Instead of Bear School of Manliness, we're actually able to acquire the name School of Manliness. So go to schoolofmanliness.com. And become a member. We we encourage the men to go there and become a member. We have a non Facebook community of men uh, where we share our 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 ups and our downs and our, even our kind of like most embarrassing moments. And we get together with uh, each other about once a month for a man cave meetup. And we also have an ongoing monthly curriculum for men that's full of audio and and video and written content. And uh, and so it's a great thing for men who join. They get uh, access to the man cave and the School of Manliness, but they can get a, a, a login code for their sons that doesn't give them access to the man cave, but does give them access to the School of Manliness, and the fathers can lead them through that school. So it's been really an interesting time. We just came back from uh, sailing in the Virgin Islands, and we had a man cave retreat on our boat, and it was cool to see the father and the sons uh, there, and, see how, and we just had a Ted Scarpino and his family here stay with us in Hawaii, and as he leads his sons through those too, it's really it's really cool to see the fruit of that. So, uh, with something that men can do, it's so hard for men to have a dialogue with that about their sons, but the 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 videos and the audio just lead you into a natural discussion where you can really communicate the the what it really means to be a man. And speaking of a real man, even though he never sweats, he only glistens. Our friend Michael Mike Aquilina, the author of Rabbles, Riots, and Ruins, his newest. <laughs> book so mike can you just give us that so i know we're i want to dig into this book now with you um 
I, I love the concept of the book going back into the the different cities, Jerusalem. The history of Jerusalem is fascinating, isn't it? it Antioch, is. Rome, Alexandria. I want to hear about Alexandria, Ephesus, Edessa, and then a name I can't, I don't know. I've never even heard of Lugdunum, but you've got it in there. And then there's a word no one can pronounce. It's got too many consonants and I don't know, vowels, in Jemaitzin or something. Constantinople, how do you say it? It's 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 as bad as in Hawaii where we don't have any consonants; we only have vowels. But and so, but can you the history of Jerusalem? That what you did with that is so cool. And you know, I love the way you present it too because you really look at it. Uh, I don't know. It's just like it's a kind of the, the behind the scenes stuff mm -hmm. that you don't normally hear about. Is that a good way to say it? Like you're a fly on the wall in Jerusalem. Well, yeah. Tell us about know, the history of Jerusalem. You know, I, in the book, I'm writing about cities, right? And every city has a, a personality to it. Uh, mm. You're never going to confuse Los Angeles with New York, right? You're right. never going to confuse Los Angeles with Des Moines. <laughs> You're right. never going right. to confuse um, Manhattan with um, with uh, Bismarck, North Dakota, right? Uh, oh, one of my favorite towns. My, one of mine, too. My, my uh, dad was born uh, 17 miles from there. I, but you see, it's, yeah. it, it can be your favorite because it's got a personality, it's got a character, right. you know, it's got a distinctiveness to it. And so what I wanted to bring out in this book is the character, you know, the personality, the distinctiveness of these ancient cities. Because if we just look at a map and see them there, or if we see them in a list in a book somewhere, a history book, it just looks like they're all the same. They all get the uniform treatment. They all are yeah. just kind of a dot or a star with a, a few letters after them, or in the case of Etchmiatzin, a lot of letters after. <laughs> Where the heck is that? <laughs> I, I haven't read that one part, that chapter yet. Where is that? <laughs> Armenia. Armenia. Oh, Armenia. So wow. they don't even the... use our alphabet. They got sounds we never even dreamed of. Yeah. Well, hey, well, let's let's skip back to Jerusalem. Yes. Let's talk about this town. And Armenia is such an important uh, place. In it was a original. Is it? Well, tell us the story about about this town. I can't pronounce in Armenia. <laughs> do you want me to do Jerusalem or <laughs> no? Do Armenia? Then we'll go back to Jerusalem. You okay. got me. Go. You got me rattled on this. Okay. I want to hear about it. You know and, uh, what I what I tell tell in there, and and, and actually, Etchmiatzin, uh, Armenia is is some place that has always been kind of a close Christian kin of Jerusalem. Uh, many of the remains of the ancient Jerusalem church uh, we find in um, in Armenian libraries. That's how we know what the liturgy was like in ancient Jerusalem because the Armenians oh. cared enough to keep it. Well, anyway, it was a, it was a, in the the. The end, at the end of the third century, beginning of the fourth century, uh, Armenia was not yet a Christian country. There were no Christian countries on the earth, right? Uh, but the um, uh, there was kind of a, a convoluted succession there. Uh, the king was assassinated, right? And they found his assassin, and they killed all of his family except his baby. And uh, the, the kings in the king's family, too, the baby survived. Well, they sent the baby off to Rome for protection. So the baby would be safe and could grow up, you know, in a in a in a, in a place uh, where he'd get a good education, be prepared uh, to, to take the, the throne in his time. Uh, the assassin's son, meanwhile, went in another direction um, and years and years and years went by. And the lives of these two men came back together. Right. When. Um, uh, when when the, the 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 man who had been the prince came back to rule as king, and he took as his advisor this man who had just come to Armenia from Cappadocia, right? And yeah. uh, he he didn't know that this was the son of his father's assassin, uh, oh. but he started um he he started relying on this guy a lot because he was so brilliant, and uh, and so uh, at a certain point the king demanded worship of of one of the local gods and and this advisor of his who had become his best friend refused right so the king throws him in prison has him tortured and still he refuses right uh, but then things start to go bad for the king so the king needs his friend and, uh, and and gets him out of there and the friend kind of gives him the gospel and the king is converted 
the king is converted. This is all the very short form of the story. Yeah, the, the yeah. king is the king is converted, and uh, and 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 he makes the whole kingdom Christian at a time when the Romans were persecuting Christians. Mm -hmm. So this is a bold move. It's the first time uh, that there's a country on the map. That's a Christian country. And you can see it in the coinage from that time. These are the first coins that have biblical symbols on them. Wow. So very wow. interesting turn of events. And you know what? If you had set out to write a novel with yeah, these characters. Yeah, sounds like one. And yeah. with uh, with with these, these kind of twists in the plot, people mm. would say, oh, that's too much. You know, that strains yeah. credulity. But this is history, and it's corroborated by so many sources from those times. You know, you know it sounds like a Shakespearean are, uh, yeah. palace, you know, intrigue. What was his cat? Was it was this during the time of the Cappadocian monk or, or Cappadocian saints that this man was converted? Or well, uh, yes, Cappadocia no. was a hotbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, it was at this time, though. Uh, you know, the the great figure was um, was uh, Saint Gregory the Wonder Worker, and uh, and he was just beginning uh, to uh, to to uh, to to have some effect in Cappadocia. Uh, he did convert at that time. At the same time, he converted the uh, the family of uh, the men we know as Saint Gregory, the Gregories, uh, yeah. Nazianzus, and. Yeah. Uh, or, or that one came a little bit later, actually. But Saint Basil the Great, Saint Gregory of Nyssa, yeah. Uh, yeah. Saint Macrina the the Elder, Saint Macrina the Younger. Yeah, the, you know the families that had all of these saints that have been so consequential in history. Uh, that that kind of evangelization was just beginning then. Yeah. What what century? What was the year about? You would you say? Uh, this is right as the 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 uh, the third century turned to the fourth. Wow. Yeah, it's so fascinating. Uh, mm -hmm. That that does sound like something Shakespeare could do do good good on. Though. Maybe he ha maybe he has, and I'm not educated enough to. I can't even. Hey, just for the fun of it, will you pronounce the name of that town again? Etchmatsin. <laughs> you know, I wish more people had written about uh, the the history of Armenia because it's a rich history, and so many of the works of the fathers that have survived have survived only because the Armenians translated them into Armenian and kept oh. them there in their libraries and preserved them for us. Otherwise, so many works of the fathers would have been lost. So many books of the ancient liturgies would have been lost. But as, as it is, we have these books and we can look at them and we can see our Catholic faith as it was practiced in the 200s and 300s. And and so, and then you go all the way forward to the, the Armenian genocide and mm -hmm. the way that those people have suffered, you know. And continue and to suffer. Yeah, you know there there's there's an Armenian uh, revolution going on now, and the Armenian Christians are being forced out, and uh, and no one's paying attention to this. It seems we mm. don't read about it in the papers. Uh, it's or, the great demonic know, conspiracy. You know, it is. It people is. talk about conspiracies, but the great demonic conspiracy. We're talking with our great friend Mike Aquilina, author and lyricist. <laughs> works with uh, writing many lyrics for songs with Dion which yeah. a lot of people don't know. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. I think that the Rabbles, Riots, and Ruins, which which uh, title does that town fall under? I would say probably the the Rabble when it comes to the assassin. Huh? I guess you would call him a Rabble. <laughs> Not a Rebel, though, a Rabble. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, we we, we got to go. We'll be right back with more of Mike Aquilina and the Bear Wozniak adventure. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy. Here is a YouTube video short which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? 
buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wastic Adventure. I'm with my guest, Mike Aquilina, and he's an author. He's I'm a wannabe author. I've got, but I do have a new book out. We have we have three books out. We have the Surface Guide to the Soul. We have uh, Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue. But the book I'm I'm really excited about is uh, the newest book, Twelve Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? And it's <laughs> God. I, I use a lot of uh, I quote the early church fathers. I quote the catechism. I quote scripture. I quote saints. But every chapter has a quote from one of my favorite authors, uh, Louis L'Amour, the great Western novelist. So many of the the great Western uh, films that we uh, we love uh, were had their were, were based on Louis L'Amour novels. In fact, during the COVID time, Cindy and I watched every Louis L'Amour Western that was done, and they weren't done. A lot of them weren't done up to the par of a Louis L'Amour Western, but they were. Uh, but uh, some of them, you know, very well. And so I do a quote from Louis L'Amour in every chapter. And really, the the book is basically just. When Cindy and I go out and speak, um, or when I go out to speak, and Cindy's with me, uh, so often I speak just to men. But when there's men and women present, usually Cindy's there with me too. The women will, will before we get out of the car, the women are there saying, tell the men we need for them to be men again. So this book has, has uh, hit the top 10 in Christian books for men uh, back when it came out, and it's still hit it <laughs> by Cacuelita's applauding. You know what that means. Uh, and then it hit it again in Amazon in the top 10 again re- most recently. So so that just means I think when that happens, Amazon kind of helps promote the book more. So, yeah. But 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? We encourage you to go to uh, EWTN Catalog or go to your local Catholic store. I, I, you can go to uh, Sophia Institute Press or to our website, schoolofmanliness.com and women you know it's your job to get this copy into your men's hands because men don't tend to buy books usually get this book into their hands tell them read the first chapter and if you don't like it you can you can put it down but men are reading this book uh cover to cover and then starting over again as soon as they finish it so it's good 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 wisdom the way men talk to other men too it's 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 spiritual but it's not pseudo spiritual you know it's 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 grit and grace so i've rambled on too much speaking of rabble we're book by our newest book uh, by mike aquilina is rabbles riots and ruins uh let's talk about jebu uh uh Jerusalem. It's. I, I know what a Jebusite is. How did you say? Was it Jebus? How did you pronounce Jerusalem Je- back in the Jebusite. day? Jebusite. Jebusite. Yeah, but it, Jebusite was the name of the. Was it the name? No, the name of the people who lived in. Yeah, that, but what was that. the name of the town? Oh my! <laughs> you say Jebus? I don't know. I think I've only seen the words Jebusite in the Bible. I don't see the word Jebus. You know, I don't think but, I've ever pronounced it out loud. Yeah, only, me neither. I've only but it, typed it in, in the book. I, I should have had a pronunciation. Uh, I'm there. sorry, Mike. I, I just got one on Mike Aquilina. So, uh, no, but, you know, the thing about, uh, we, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a guy there that was a king there that we, and a priest that we quote every time we have mass. So in this, in this, uh, this place of the Jebusites, tell us the history of Jerusalem. Well, it's fascinating. Yeah. You know, it first uh, gets on the map as um, as Jerusalem in in the time of of King David, you know, because he makes it his capital, right? He makes it his capital. He takes it at last, and and uh, and, and makes it his capital. But go capital. further back. Go further oh, back. Oh, it had an ancient history, you know. At first, we want to hear that Bible in the Book of Genesis, right? And uh, because uh, at that time it's called Salem, okay. And later on, it's called Jerusalem, right? So Salem remains in its name. But in Salem, Abraham meets the first man in the Bible described as a priest, Melchizedek, right? 
And Melchizedek makes the offering of bread and wine uh, to God Most High, right? And yeah. uh, and and uh, of course we see that uh, in the New Testament we learn that that Jesus is a priest in the line of Melchizedek. So he's a priest, you know, that who's who's universal. He's a universal priest, and it's a pure line. It's a line that has not fallen. Mysteri uh, Melchizedek is a priest and a king, and he's a, a very mysterious figure. You know he's um he's uh he doesn't appear otherwise you know in 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 Hebrews it mentions that he's a man without father and mother without genealogy right so he became yeah. a figure of fascination for the Jews at the time of Jesus and of course he became a figure of fascination for the Christians as well as a result so this is the land we're talking about and it's and it it uh it's important that King David. Uh, takes that land and uses it as his capital and and serves as a priest and a king there because mm -hmm. he does you know he's the man who um who who offers worship who offers service to the lord in front of the ark of the covenant right and he installs mm -hmm. the ark there uh you know in the in, in in the in the holy city and it's his son another priest king who builds the temple right to contain mm -hmm. the ark of the covenant in the holy of mm -hmm. holies this is the only place on earth where true sacrifice can be offered. Legitimate, sa legitimate sacrifice to the mm -hmm. God uh, who, who is creator of the whole world. Um, so so uh, it becomes the most important thing in uh, the most important place in biblical cosmology. It's a very important place. Uh, and it becomes the model for um, for for cities in many ways, it becomes the reason why Christians place such an emphasis on cities. And when we get to uh, the Book of Revelation at the end of of, uh, of the Christian scriptures, uh, we find that Jerusalem is now heavenly. Right, mm -hmm. it, the city is in heaven, and uh, the the Book of Revelation is largely a description of what happens in that heavenly Jerusalem. So Jerusalem was was important, you know, to to the people of Israel, to the Jews, uh, and and then to the Christians in in, in time. It uh, it becomes uh, an important uh, figure in our cosmology. There's another big word, cosmology. <laughs> hey, Mike, I, you know, I'm fortunate right here in my cigar box. I have a little yeah. coin. I can't quite reach it. Or I'd bring it out. And it's a coin from the time of um, now I, um, of the uprising around 70 AD. Yes. In Jerusalem. What was the, what was the, I can't remember the person now, who, what, what that uprising is called. But it was, you know, how coins are so important. You, you, you referenced one in our first segment, mm -hmm. how coins kind of tell a lot. People can find a coin oh, when they're yeah. doing archaeology. Yes. But tell us about that. It's interesting you talk about how the sacrifice, how the Jewish faith is based on, um, you know, sacrificing of, of bulls and lambs and doves and, bur you know. Uh, but it's so interesting, isn't it, that at some point that ended around that time. Yes. And now all we have left, it, we, we, and so the Jews, um, the, the, the Jewish practice of sacrifice ended but what remains is, you know, the Eucharist oh, sacrifice. Can you talk about that 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 time in Jerusalem? Well, you know, the the time uh, from our Lord's ascension into heaven and the Pentecost that followed until seventy A.D. was really a transitional time for the world, for the mm. world, because true sacrifice only took place in Jerusalem. But in seventy A.D., the Romans laid siege to Jer Jerusalem. Because because uh, because there were factions there that had banded together uh, to, uh, to to throw the Romans out, to throw out the occupiers and return uh, the land of Israel to um, to observance of the law. Right. To start to rule again by by the principles um, of Moses. Right. So they um, so they, uh, they 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 wanted to throw them the 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 occupying power out. Uh, the Romans, of course, were not going to allow them to do this. They laid siege to Jerusalem. It was a terrible, terrible siege. Um, it's it's described in the Book of Revelation. It's described in um, in uh, the writings of Josephus, and it was brutal. It was brutal. They were starving them. People were, you know, Josephus describes mothers eating their infant children because they were starving. Uh, it's uh, 
Mm. It was terrible. But, uh, you know, at the end, the Romans do enter and they do destroy the temple. They burn the temple to the ground. And uh, if you go to Jerusalem today, nothing remains of the temple except the retaining wall on the hillside. And that's mm -hmm. the Wailing Wall. That's what we call mm -hmm. the Wailing Wall. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, and it, it was just wiped out. The temple had been an architectural marvel. It was the yes. centerpiece of the city. Uh, it was uh, it was renowned. And uh, and Jesus predicted that not one stone would be left upon the other. And that's true. That's true. And and, and yet there's it. a sacrifice that remains. Oh, that's right. That's right. The, the you got, tell, tell us that in one minute. Tell us oh, that the, in one minute. <laughs> the temple was obsolete at that point, right? Mm -hmm. And and Jesus offered his body and blood in sacrifice at the Last Supper, that last Passover meal. And he consummated the sacrifice with his own body and his blood on the cross. Mm -hmm. And on, on Easter Sunday, he arose and he showed us that that would be the, the sacrifice that extended into all future history because he he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to, to the two disciples who were with him and he and they knew it, they knew it to be his real presence. And and it's 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 fascinating because um, there you go back to the to to the uh, to Melchizedek, you know, and, and and we say from east to west a perfect offering will be made, yes. and so that now there's never a time when the sun sets or the sun rises where there isn't at that moment the Eucharist being offered. So yes. for the Jews it was only allowed in Jerusalem, but with Jesus it's from east to west, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same uh, Jesus. The, the Eucharist and I'm and I'm, my office, by the way, is right above where the Eucharist is in the Catholic Church right next door. We're talking oh with Mike Aquilina. We're talking about some of his good friends, rabbles, riots and ruins back in the when was this back in the hippie days you were rioting? <laughs> no, he go. He's he's teaching us about these great cities. Uh, and we're going to be when we come back, we'll talk about some more. But he uses the 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 personality of the cities to express how the church uh grew the the how you the the cities in in so many ways uh each one of them express express uh had a special expression of of the gospel we right be right back with mike aquilina people love our ewtn tv show long ride home with bear wozniak thanks to you the show has won four different tally awards and now instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Don't be a quitter. As my ninja sensei used to say as he pushed down on my shoulders, assisting me, in doing push-ups, you can do one more of anything. When I paddled my surfboard across the treacherous Molokai Channel, it was just one paddle stroke at a time across those 35 miles. When I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, it was just one more pedal stroke at a time that got me across. To a cowboy, being a quitter is as bad as being a horse thief. When someone quits, they leave others holding the bag and having to do their work, or worse yet, they leave them in a dangerous position. We need to carry our own backpack. Louis L'Amour said in The Education of a Wandering Man, much was forgiven if a man had courage, integrity, and if he did his job. If a man gave less than his best though, somebody always had to pick up the slack and he was not admired.
My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest, Mike Aquilina, is with us. His new book, Rabbles, Riots, and Ruins. You know, Mike, when I travel, you know, I get to go to, you know, the, you know, the Far East, go to Ephesus or Jerusalem or Rome or Greece, you know. it. I'm going to just tell like it is. The ruins, you know, they all start looking like, I, I told Cindy the other day, they need to get some new ruins. They should make some new ones because they all look, they all kind of start looking alike. But it was so cool when we were talking in our last segment about Jesus' sacrifice. Mike Aquilina, if you're watching on on, on YouTube, um he leaned, he he sat up in his chair and he leaned forward. You could see his excitement to talk about the Eucharist. That was really cool. Uh, I I'm always fascinated about Alexandria. Mm -hmm. You know the great library and the history it has. Can you tell us about Alexandria? And isn't this where the Septuagint was written? I forget. Yes, it was. Will you yes, tell us all about that? <laughs> well, Alexandria was a city with a personality, with a character, with a distinctiveness, just like all the others, right? Alexandria was like Cambridge is today, where we have Harvard and MIT and all of this research going on. It was kind of a, a brainy city. It was known for its its library. One of the early kings there, the, in the the line the line established from um, uh, Alexander the Great's generals, uh, one of the early kings wanted to 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 build a library that included every book published in the world, right? Yeah. And he wanted he wanted these to be available in the Greek language, and so he he invited the Jews living in Alexandria to do a translation, and so the the Septuagint was um was uh, was translated by. It's called the Septuagint because it was translated by by seventy translators, and according to the legend, uh, they all translated the same thing miraculously. And they did it in how short of a time? It was a very short time. Yeah, it was a very short time. Uh, so, well, you so know, it, yeah, you know, the, you know, what is miraculous is, about it? Yeah, that that was like, but it was all done within what's less than half a year, right? Or it's a very short time. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've always thought that that I always thought that Jesus used the King James version. That's what I was always told. But it actually turns out he used the Septuagint, didn't he? And some of some of his uh, with the, the quotes that he used, they say came from the Septuagint. I mean, the, the seems, Septuagint version. It seems he, that that was the version that the apostles were most familiar with, the apostles and the evangelists, because that's the one that they lean on the most. Isn't that interesting? So they didn't use the King James version. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one was speaking English at this time. <laughs> okay, so, but you, some some people make us think so. But anyway, tell us about more about Alexandria, the history of Alexandria. Well, as I said, it, it was a brainy town, and it was uh, it was also a town with a large Jewish population. As much as uh, you know, ten percent of the population was Jewish, and so there was a rich. Jewish intellectual life going on there. Many famous Jewish intellectuals lived in Alexandria, like Philo of Alexandria. So, um, so the other thing that Alexandria was kind of famous for was disputes, disputes that led to riots. Right, they tended ah. to have factions, and and the factions would would have arguments, and the arguments would sometimes explode into a riot. Now, riots were. A terrible thing in the ancient world because people could do a lot of damage. They could, you know, people could get killed. Uh, it was disorder. It would, it could, it could uh, lead to damage in property. 
Um, and so they were usually harshly suppressed, right? Uh, Alexandria was, mm. was a place that was often kind of exploding into riots, you know, in spite of this very refined intellectual life, this rich cultural life there, there were often riots. And, and riots actually are, are a key part of the story of many of these ancient cities, mm -hmm. not only Alexandria, but Ephesus. I begin the mm -hmm. story of Ephesus with the, the riot of the silversmiths, which we know from the Acts of the Apostles. And, and, and I talk about a, a riot that took place in Antioch. That mm -hmm. was um, a fateful riot uh, in in that city. So so yeah, you know it's uh, it uh, Alexandria was um, was an important city. Many of the great figures of early Christianity emerged there, uh, like like Athanasius. Yeah, of Alexandria. that's my favorite saint. Love him. He well, is, how did how did Christianity get to Alexandria? Do you know? Uh, well, you know, according to tradition, it got to Alexandria by way of Mark the Evangelist, who was a close disciple of St. Peter uh, and and who knew St. Paul as well and worked with St. Paul. So he had quite a pedigree. Um, uh, that's kind of lost. Mark, the, John, Mark, the, the author of, of the gospel. Yes. Uh, yes. Who. OK, so John Mark, it, uh, was his name John Mark or was it Mark? The, well, it was had, John Mark and he, yeah. he was known as Mark. Now was he was he the one that kind of blew it with Paul and Barnabas? Yes, yes, you know, and See, and, uh, and 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 a lot of these a lot of these uh, these characters from the New Testament have troubled backstories, you know, yeah. just like you and I have a troubled backstory. He abandoned ship on Paul and Barnabas, right? Yeah, almost yeah. literally. Yeah, and yet look, and yet look what happened when Barnabas took him under his wing. That's right. And then he became, and then he was took care of was kind of. P, P, St. Peter's, I would say, almost like assistant, right, in Rome. Yes, yes. And so he and was then, well prepared for uh, for the office of bishop, you know, which he took wow. up in Alexandria. We don't. Oh, know I didn't know that. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting yeah. you. No. Wow. Yeah. So he was. Uh, he's 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 recognized as the first bishop of Alexandria, and he died as a martyr there in the streets of Alexandria, where he was dragged to his death. Um, but oh. uh, you know, we don't know too much about the early church. There's a lot of speculation. There's spe there was speculation among the church fathers, for example, about. Philo of Alexandria and the possibility that he might have converted to Christianity because he certainly would have known about it and he certainly uh, would have uh, uh, would have encountered it in some way. Um, so uh, so yeah, that's that's a possibility. And in, in, in any event, Philo of Alexandria, the great ph the Jewish philosopher of that time, had a profound influence on the way uh, the Bible was interpreted in Alexandria. And then Alexandria had a profound influence in the way the Bible was interpreted all over the world, throughout the entire church. Um, uh, the, first, the first critical multi-language edition of the Bible was published in Alexandria. Wow. You know, oh, I wish. Scripture scholars. I wish that. Thank God for the Jews uh, and even the Muslims, you know, mm -hmm. um, after the, the, when the, when the library was burned down, the Muslims also cop made copies of a lot of the manu manuscripts of the great philosophers and and things like that i know they i think aquinas is i think the 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 um aquinas's love for aristotle i think made its pathway across north africa into spain and up into paris eventually so thank god for for those people that, that who love learning but you know think about th the thing about your book is that christianity actually did spread city to city it wasn't like it went through uh the backwoods, you know, someplace to 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 find its roots, and thank thank you know the Roman thank thankfully for uh, the Pax Romana right and the and and the Roman roads mm -hmm. and all, all these cities that uh, flourished really under Roman occupation, even though it wasn't the sweetest thing for some of the people. But I know the one thing the Romans didn't like was a riot. Yes, and that was one of the reasons why Jesus was was. Uh, when things started to come to a head, why the the big concern of the of the uh, the um, the Jewish leaders was that that there was going to be a problem because because he was causing an uprising. Yes, yes. So yeah, riots uh, riots are an important part of the story, uh, and um, and 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 Alexandria is an important part of all of our history. What we don't um, often think about is what an important uh, role. The, the, the continent of Africa 
played in the early development of Christianity. And that's a, that's yes. one thing that I tried to bring out in this book. Another thing I tried to bring out in this book, because um, because I do have African cities in here. I have I have Alexandria and Carthage Egypt, and I have Carthage. Right. So it's. Uh, well I've heard we have we have to we have to head out now, but I, I've heard it said, people go, oh, you know, because there's this these great revivals taking place in yeah. Africa now, and I've heard it said, well, you know, you're taking this European religion and forcing it down the throats of the African people, but Africa was Christian long before Europe was Christian, or at least yes. Our Western liturgy, our Latin mass started in North Africa. It didn't start in Italy. It didn't start in Rome. <laughs> we're Roman Catholics, but we were using a Greek liturgy until the Africans took the trouble, you know, to 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 uh, to uh, to to introduce a Latin liturgy. So the liturgy we use today, we can use thanks to the African Christians. Isn't that cool? Of the 100s it's just so cool we've been talking with our good friend mike aquilina and his book is his newest book of his 70 or he doesn't know how many books anymore rabbles riots and ruins i you know normally i wait for the publisher to send these to me because i get them for free i bought this the moment i heard it came out oh, i bought okay. it on amazon it was there within a couple of days so i'm looking forward to finishing my read mike aquilina thank you for being my friend, and thank you for being our guest of the show, our most returning guest, Mike Aquilina. Mike, where can people find you if they want you to come speak and do other rabble-rousing things? Well, I'm out there. You know, I'm out there on social media. You'll find me there. Uh, you can uh, you can go to my website if you want to contact me more directly. Uh, my website is fathersofthechurch.com. Fathersofthechurch.com. Wow, that that's a that's a great website name, <laughs> Mike. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope you. Uh, you weather the, the heat yep. where you are, and uh, you end up with a great summer. Thank you for joining us. Thanks again for having me, Bear. Until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wildstick Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wildstick Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.